Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. So ready, ready to start? Okay, cool. Thank you for, uh, thank you. I have to minimize. We'll be able to see you really, but that's okay. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm honored to be here. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tim Brzezinski and I am an avid GeoGebra enthusiast. Um, I love using GeoGebra for teaching and learning on a daily basis. I work with uh, teachers and students all over the U.S. Um, I work internationally via virtual means, but um, just before we start here, uh, if I could have you come to this URL right here, uh, basically, if you can uh, go to your phone or on your computer, just it's tinyurl.com slash ggb3dar, all right? That tiny URL will take you to um, a Google Doc, all right, that has important links to it. Now, were you, uh, was everybody here able to um, uh, get, um, get the, the, app, the 3D app downloaded to your Androids and or iPhones? Or do we need to take a minute to do that? Okay, cool. So, um, but so basically, right there uh, in that in that URL that you see there. Okay, there are actually uh, that that takes you right to. Um, let me just go there, here. Okay, we're here to talk about using GeoGebra 3D with augmented reality. Um, now, uh, in each of this, before I even go on, I'm going to demo stuff. This document here uh, contains explorations and lesson ideas for those with iOS or Apple devices. If you're non-iOS, Android, others, uh, this GeoGebra book right here has tons of resources that you could explore in your own time. Okay, But for the most part, I, my, Jolst asked me to really share my vision of how this is going to look like in the years to come within mathematics education, right? 3D and augmented reality, because we all know AR is really a way of the future here. It, it really, really is, because what I'm, what I'm, what my heart is really, what I'm envisioning is that I want to see students from elementary, middle, and high school, and even you know undergraduate, using using the the technology that exists right now, cutting edge, in order to model and build the world around them. Okay, let's let's actually start uh, in. Let's start with something very very basic. Say, okay, uh, for example, uh, right over here. Okay, I have my I have my iPad on the left. I have my uh, my Acer Google Chrome tablet here on the right. But for example, I just want to show you uh, something. Show you this here. Okay, on my desk here, if I may. Um, let me get the camera here, so you can see it. All right now. I always love showing the fractal here, but see right here on my desk, I have uh, this rectangular prism, right? And I have a cylinder right next to it, okay? Now I'm thinking seventh or eighth grade geometry here, okay? See, ma most math teachers get this impression that, oh, three-dimensional 3D graphing is only for like, you know, uh, those gifted students, or maybe it's only for students taking like calculus three, where we talk about directional derivatives, equations of tangent planes and such. You know, but really, 3D graphing is for everybody in, in within middle and high elementary, middle and high school. Because com think about it, we live in a 3D world. So why are our students not doing more with 3D plotting? They should be. And many high school teachers tell me, oh, because it's not in the curriculum. And I say, well, you know what? Curriculum's got to change. You know what? Curriculum has been a fluid document anyway. But see, I have a rectangular prism here. I have a cylinder here. And so I have the kids, and so we actually, we can, and so I'm actually going to uh, kind of line these up here so that, uh, the, so that the cylinder is like tangent to the ruler, if that makes sense, right? And I have the prism right here. So if I'm teaching geometry, say, even in like a, a geometry class or an algebra one class, even we talk about point plotting, so you know what? I want you to, I want you to build this in the 3D graphing calculator. And kids are like, huh, what? You know, and we can. Now, I'm not a millennial by any means. I was born in 79, but you know something? Just because it uh, doesn't mean I can't create, I like to go to my computer to create, as I'm doing right here. And I literally will go to the 3D graphing calculator. I, I create in the apps, in, uh, in the software, and then I actually open up on my iPad or on my phone. Now, this generation likes to create on their phone. 
but you know what? It doesn't matter. They could create, create whatever. Okay, so this is where I start creating. And so that prism right there, let me just see it uh, for, for the most part, but we could start plotting points like this, right? Zero, 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 right? And then uh, let's, I think I measured that side was like, uh, it was eight and eight tenths centimeters, right? So I put a point there. That was that box right there. And so students, even in middle school, elementary, students should be able to tell me what the other two vertices of that base is. Right? That makes sense? So, see, this is, we're giving them real life experience here, but we're also practicing a basic skill of uh, plotting points in three space, if that makes sense. Right? Isn't that going to be eight and eight tenths? Uh, eight and eight tenths? Right? Uh, actually, the, actually the, that's not square. It was actually rectangular. Right, right there. And then, what would the coordinates of the fourth point be? Zero, right? Zero, um, eight, and then uh, zero right there. And so now I could use the polygon tool or just do polygon A, B, C, D, right? And there's my base. Now the height of that, uh, the height of that box on my desk was actually three and six tenths inches. So I could actually just say, okay, prism. I like to use the tools too, but I'm just trying to save time here. But if I go down here and just type in prism, say um, the base of that prism is going to be Q1 and its height is uh, three and six tenths centimeters. See right there? I literally... Uh, just made that in a matter of a, a minute or two. And I, and I want my kids, I want students to be able to do the same thing. Pick, you know, measure, thing, measure objects in the classroom and build them in the 3D calculator. Again, you don't need to know Calculus 3 in order to work in here. If, you see what I'm saying? So right here, okay, so let's actually uh, quickly show the auxiliary objects so I can hide all those ugly labels. Give me a second. Um, right, we just want to hide them um, and I'll sort it by object type. All right, so we can actually hide all those edges there. Give me one minute. I just uh, click on the word segment, just right click, settings, and then un undo the labels there. There's more there, right? But see now, I have this that I've just plotted right here. And so what do I do? What do I want, what do I want this generation to be doing in mathematics education starting now and going forward? Well, let's actually save this and we can open it up right in our, right in our phones. Okay, so I'm going to save this, file save. Uh, whoops, not export, hang on, I'll download it anyway, fine. But let me go to file, save, I'll save it as a test box. Right now it's shared with link, but I'll make it a public resource for now. So uh, iOS people can get it too. So saving, saving, and then save successfully, okay. So I go here to my GeoGebra profile, and if you want to open up your phones, let's see if you can all get this here. You are thousands of miles away from me, but I just created this, and um, we go here, okay, and there's the test box right there. Whoa, it's huge, but um, open it up, okay, and um, try going into... Uh, now, the easiest way to get it is to just copy the digits of the URL there. So I'm going to actually uh, paste it here. If you go into open up now, watch this. If you open up your 3D graphing calculator on your phone, okay, or I'll do it on my, uh, I'll do it on my Chromebook tablet here. All right, so go here now. All right, and let's go to the 3D grapher. And where it, says, uh, where it says up there, go to open. I think in, app, uh, in the iOS it says search, I think. Those words aren't exactly the same, but that's okay. So the easiest way is to type in that URL right there. That should make that resource show up instantly. Okay? And I'll make this bigger so you can all see it. All right? Even bigger. So let's type in WY. It is, it is case sensitive. R F W. F N Q and enter. See how test box. I, I now I could have typed the word text bo test box, but there's some other ones out there with that title. So I click on it. All right, and then look at that. It's right there. And now the students in our classroom today, what can they do? They can actually take their phones, their iPhones, their Androids. I'm going to hit the AR button now, and I'm going to actually test this and see if it works. You see, this is the beauty that augmented reality, ladies and gentlemen, brings to the table. 
that has never been able to brought to math ed before. Stu we want students to model. There's no math teacher in the world that'll tell me that modeling is not important because we all know it is, right? But let's go one step further. After students build the models, here it's like, well, how can I test it unless I have a 3D printer? I'll get Diego to come and just print this out for me and see if I can see how well it fits. But another means, and that's, and I'm not knocking that, we should be doing that. But here, you know what, let me hit the AR button in the, in the corner there, and I'll actually uh, aim it at the floor. All right, if you, have an, if you have an iPhone or an Android, you'll see a little square, but on the Google ones, on the non-iOS ones, you see like a um, isometric graph paper kind of thing. So touch the square, there's my box. Now, now the key is to move slow. Just gent see how it kind of froze on there, I'm moving too fast here. But let me hit, if that happens to you, just hit 3D. Whoops. Hang on a second. Great. All right. And the um, close that out. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, close that. That normally that normally does not happen. Sorry. Um, I'll try typing in test box. Oh, there it is. Oh wow. See, it appeared back up. It's magic, right? So I'll hit AR again. I'm gonna go really slow this time here. Aim it on my desk. Ah, view. That's better. I got it right there, and then now the now the now this is like this is the icing on the cake, ladies and gentlemen, right here. The key is to superimpose it perfectly over what you have there. Now I, I get we're not shooting a rocket to the moon here, and I maybe I got the length width wrong, but the thing is, it, no, no matter how you slice or dice it, it should fit pretty well. All right. Now if you actually make these, um, it's a little shaky, but. If you make these uh, coordinates in terms of sliders, you can actually uh, you know, slide there. I think uh, maybe I messed up one of those dimensions there, but that's the, the whole point there. Now, if you go to open again, I'll show you this. It is in here. I'm actually going to do it on my uh, iPad. All right. Um, right here. Okay, open up 3D graphing calculator right there. Uh, go to search. And I'll just type in, uh, if you type in the word STEAM, it should pop up, S-T-E-A-M. Um, I have three demos here. Uh, if you go to demo three, that's what it was right there. Not that you have these, not that you have these objects in front of you, but I, go, I, I'm, I went to the STEAM and it said demo three. I built this early this morning here just to test it out. And uh, I'll show you the quick demo here, at least on the iPad. All right, here we go putting in augmented reality. This is, what I, this is what we need to have our students doing more of. This, I mean, come on, you can, go to, you can go to like an Ikea or something like that and use their augmented reality app. There we go, that's a lot better, right? You can use your augmented reality app, right, to uh, see how, how something fits in your, your living room, all right? But here, you know, augmented reality, let's use that to students' advantage. They not only have to build it, but they need to be able to, uh, they should be able to test, virtually test the models as well. I think the tangency kind of got messed up here. Let me, hang on a second. Make sure, I'm just going to line these up quickly again because I think I, they came a little off. That's better. Just lined it up with the ruler. And now, let's test it again. The cool part is with, uh, with these things is that if, if, it's, if it's built pretty well, it, tends, it, it wants to glue itself to the objects, like right here. Now, it's kind of glued well, but I'm, I'm backing up. But... No, it, it did it this morning, but see here, it's actually uh, it's kind of right there. All right. So our again, we don't need to be in a super high level calculus class in order to uh, right in order to be able to build these things. We could do it in, in elementary and middle school, and we should be starting there. Okay. Let's talk about something else in terms of modeling. Then we'll go to the higher we'll go to the higher grades and the higher courses. All right. Let's talk. Um, and this uh, you know Jules is going to chuckle here, but. Um, isn't this every math teacher's favorite candy right here? I use this example a lot. From Switzerland, right? Why do math teachers love Toblerone so much? Anybody? <laughs> Can't see you because you're uh, down there, let me see. Why do we love Toblerone so much? What can you tell me about it? Say it again. Yeah, it's the only thing in life that I can think of that comes in a triangular prism, right? I mean, rectangular prisms, we have tissue boxes, we have whatever. And, uh, but for triangular prisms, there's not a whole lot of things. But here, 
Toblerone is, is, a, is, a triangular, is a triangular prism, but even better, talk to me about the base of that triangular prism. What kind of a triangle is that? Very good. And so now, let's, let's actually visit geometry class in 8th and 9th grade, and let's have them build this model here. They can do it. And I, and I work with you as teachers and students. I'm telling you, these, our kids can do it. Anybody, any students who've studied equilateral and isosceles triangles, especially in the context of coordinate geometry, should be able to build this in the coordinate plane. Now, I do have data here. This thing is 21 centimeters long, and it's 3.5 centimeters. Uh, the, the, um, this, uh, side, this edge right here is 3.5 centimeters. That's 21 centimeters right here. Okay? So... Let's actually take it now I, um, to say now how we would actually build this in, I'm not actually going to build the whole thing right now, but you're going to help me walk the kid through it because I have it built already. I'm going to show you in a second. But if, if you're the teacher in a geometry classroom, say, right, let's go here. Uh, let me go back and just go to new. Oops, minimize that. Uh, let's go here to the 3D calculator. And so, again, I have an equilateral triangle right here. Okay, I'll just show you kind of holding it right there. All right. So here's what I'm, here's what I, here's, here's what I'm thinking. All right. We could probably put a point at, say, maybe, uh, now this, this actually was three and a half long. So um, not to guide students thinking too much, but you see what I'm saying? I might want to put a point here. here oh. You see how that's half of three and a half? And so I'll, the other coordinate would be what, negative one and three quarters, right? That's half of three and a half, right? So I'm, I'm actually building this literally to scale here in the, in, the cal in the 3D app. Now I could do this on my device as well, but again, I'm choosing not to here. But let me actually, uh, I'm gonna actually, give me one second, I'm gonna move this over so it's easier to see. Okay, now, can anybody in the room here help me out? I'm going, to put the third, I'm going to put the third vertex somewhere on the positive z-axis. But the question is, see right there, that's like negative one point, right here is negative one and three quarters, zero, zero. Right here, that's point B right there. This is point A right here. I need to put a point C up here. Can anybody tell me what the coordinates of that point C has to be? You got to shout it because I have earphones, but I still need to hear you. The guy across the street's mowing his lawn. Go figure. Well, it's definitely zero, zero something, right? But what's the third coordinate? See, this is what our geometry kids need to be doing. Because if I think about it, if I slice, it, if I slice this in half, what kind of a triangle do I get on each side? Yep, we do Pythagoras' theorem, right? Which is what I would encourage the kids to do, but isn't it really uh, basically that, that shorter leg times the square root of uh, three? Yeah, and so, exactly, and, and, and so right here, if I, get the, if I make the polygon here, all right, um, your, your kids can build this, all right? Uh, where's the, Where's the polygon tool? I always get blind when I'm doing a presentation. Uh, polygon, there it is, Whoop, right there. So let's make that polygon now. And now, oh wait a minute, isn't, 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 a, isn't transformational geometry a vital part of any geometry curriculum, right? So don't we need, instead of putting more points on there, can't we just translate that triangle so many units down the y-axis, right? So let's make a vector. Let's make a vector say that's, um, that's the length of, isn't, that, isn't the y component the length of the prism, which is actually, it was actually 21, 0. And that vector is called u, and so now I can simply translate. I can translate that t1 triangle by vector u, and ladies and gentlemen, there you have the basis of your Toblerone right there. Okay, but I actually already did the work yes, uh, last night for this, and so if you want to open it up, feel free. And if any of you have a Toblerone on you by chance, I don't know what the chances of are that, but if you, go, if you go to the store tonight, get a Toblerone and open up this file, see how well it fits. You're more than welcome to try, but if you go open um, 
go open up the 3D, gra calc 3D uh, graphing calculator on your device. Okay, I'll show you exactly where it is. You can find it. It's right here. Um, whoops. So if we go to uh, search right here. And just type in the word STEAM again. It's actually demo one right here. It's Innovation STEAM conference. If you just type in the word STEAM to search, is, is, uh, is that appearing for you by chance? Are you finding that in your menu when you type in the word STEAM? Okay, so hit demo one, all right? Basically, you could zoom in and out. That's literally what I built last night, and that actually is the Toblerone. I'll actually demo it here for you really quickly. Um, but, um, act, but yeah, so now I hit the AR button. Wait for, look at the, look, wait for the magic square. Hang on. Needs that nice light source there, but because I have a black desk background here, I'm going to put on white paper, the Toblerone here. Okay, and let's take this guy, and let's superimpose it and see how well it fits. Check it out. Now, your kids, we could have our kids making screencasts. And look at that. It actually latched itself right on. And watch this. This is the magic of augmented reality. The, the better you build your model, you, walk, you back away slowly. It actually stays glued to the model itself. I am backing away at a very slow rate. But check it out. That virtual model, it's off a little bit. That virtual model we built in GeoGebra, I'm like, look at that. It, that's crazy. Isn't that awesome? It's, it's my favorite app of all time. It's, it's just unbelievable. Okay, now, here's another, here's another challenge I have for students. You, there's your first task, here's your second task. I want you to take two Toblerones now. And see, again, Jolst asked me to talk about math in the future. This is what I'm envisioning, which is what I want to be have happening today. Kids can do this in geometry, algebra one, algebra two. We should be having them do it right over here. Now, I actually, uh, all I did is I actually uh, found the midpoint of that edge there. And I have two Toblerones now. This, this base is meeting the midpoint right there. And so now if we go back, hit 3D, go back and go back to search one more time. And let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, Steam. Type in Steam for search and just type in Demo 2, uh, that right there. And that's actually that model built right there. So if you, have, if you uh, are daring and want to buy two Toblerones later after the conference, feel free and you could play with this. And by the way, you can mess with everything here. I actually made it, I actually made it a, a sliding scale, pretty much, that it's all it's like proportion. You see what I'm saying? If you look at the coordinates, it'll make sense. But let's see how well the model fits. Again, your students will always need time to make these. It is imperative that we give our students time to build instead of just direct lecturing, which I know you would all agree with. But the thing is, if kids can, if, if we live in a 3D world, Tell me why teachers are only sticking to the coordinate plane. That makes no sense to me. We should be modeling in 3D from early on. Okay, look at that. The kids can do that. Now, think of, think of all the concepts that they have to integrate together. Court, they have to talk about algebra, like coordinate plane. We're in the coordinate plane, but also in three space. We have to talk about ge ge geometry principles. Oh, properties of, of, of equilateral triangles. We're integrating it into one beautiful app here called GeoGebra 3D with AR. And yet this, if, if students are able to do something like this, make a screencast and they send it to their teacher, then any kind of paper test, which is really a low, lower level thinking questions anyway, um, is really, is gonna be kind of like, for most, like a joke, if you will. All right, so that's, that's an idea. Let me just present to you one more idea before I talk about like math is really an art, using uh, AR for art, if you will. Uh, right over here, uh, if I may, let me see here, get my camera back. Here I have a cone. Okay, actually before I show you that, let's actually, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the AR app one more time. The 3D app, I'm sorry. Uh, would you please type in the word um, uh, surface and then template, T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E. -E. Uh, there it is, yes. If you type in surface template, uh, it's either one of these. It, does, like, it looks like a cone. See how this one here says surface of revolution or surface of rev, it says augmented reality template. Would you click on either one of those, please? Like this one right here that I'm, 
pressing right there or the one or the second one from the top. Okay. We could build this, but we don't I don't have the time to do that right now. But I want you to note three things here. All you have are three items. You have a piecewise function. You have a you have a function with restricted domain. Don't most kids know what y equals x looks like? They should, right? You have a slider called angle. And you have this other command called surface. Now, Algebra 1 students are not going to know what the heck this means. They don't need to. Neither do calculus students. But point is, let's slide that slider here. Now, many ge now this is a resource that geometry teachers in middle school, right, and calculus teachers in college could use this same resource, but for two different reasons. For geometry in the, uh, in the younger grades, ki don't kids struggle to, to describe the, the 3D solid of revolution that's formed by rotating a, an object about a line? Here, they can jump out of their seat and tell you it's a cone, right? But the AP calculus students, why do they need this? Because they want to see what the heck that solid they're finding the volume of in Calc 1 or Calc 2 actually looks like, if that makes sense. So now, Let's project this in augmented reality. All right, keep it right there. There it is. Hit. Aha, look at that. So now, here's, now, now this is, now if you're an Algebra 1 teacher, your kids can now do this. I have a cone that I quickly made before. The radius of this cone is two and a half centimeters, right? The height of this cone is 10 centimeters. Now, ask, I asked my students, let me actually uh, change the color here to get it to be seen better. Give me one second. That's much nicer. I love that blue. It's my favorite color. Now, I want you guys to role play the student. Is that a good model to model this cone that I have right here? What do you think? No. So, can you, you got to shout because I'm having a hard time hearing you. What do I need to do to my function here in order to build this model? Kids are now creating. You see, this is higher level thinking. This is not solved for Rex. So yes, we need a little bit of that procedural algorithmic stuff. They need to know the concepts, but we need to have our kids create. That's so vital. Tell me how I have to change. What has to change here? Anybody? So four has to change to what? Not four, but again, what, what, what part of the cone is going along the x-axis here? The radius or the height? It's the height here. It's 10. Now, I have to actually go back out of th at three. I have to actually zoom, zoom out a little bit to actually get this whole thing, right? But now, let's go back here. There we go. So I'm going from 0 to 10, but tell me, what, what, about that, what about that linear function has to change? We're going from 0 to 10 now, but what else has to change? It's what? Anybody? I'm not sure, but if someone said slope, that's right. But what would wouldn't the slope of this be two and a half? That's the rise. The, isn't, isn't the radius the rise and the, the height's the run, right? 2.5 to 10. See right there? See how, look, at, look at that equation now. It's y equals two and a half to, to 10 x. There it is, and look at this. Your kids build this. There you go. And look, if I move it, see how it wants to move along with it? The better you build your model, it literally wants to be a like it's like magnet to the to the to the thing itself. It's pretty cool, but we're just beginning to scratch the surface here of what we can literally do with augmented reality. One one last little thing. Talk about math as an art. How about students learning trigonometry? Um, let's actually go to four. You could change this. Let's make it the sine function. Ooh, what does that look like? What do we have here? A fish, right? Now, we'll put it in AR one more time. Yes, we can go inside it. But here's what I love to ask uh, Algebra 2 students, and actually whatever, and talk, talk with functions. 
how do we how can we actually put a mouth on this fish? I want I want to open a mouth right over here. Again, math is an art. We're talk we're actually having kids work with these functions, but to create artistic pieces. And we're just getting we're just starting very basic right now. Never mind, we could do so much later. I know I'm almost out of time, but um, what would I need to do in order to put a mouth on this fish? Anybody? I mean, the function's not going to change. Let's keep, let's keep the tail there, but what about that zero? What's, what should that zero change into, maybe? To open it, maybe point uh, two? Ooh, yeah. Right? And now I have an activity that asks kids to make two kissing fish, and they have to recall the sign function is odd. So if I go from negative four to four, see what I mean? But obviously, I, I, part of my AR window's chopped out. If I go back and zoom out and go back in again, I'll be able to. But see how kids in calculus can understand co cross sections conceptually. All right? Math is an art, and having kids create. One more thing. Um, I want to just show you one thing. You know those calculus questions that kids always have a hard time with where they have, they have a solid with a certain base and a cross section that's parallel to the y-axis is a whatever, right? But um, let's type in the word heptagonal. Heptagon. Let's try heptagon. Let's see here. That's not an often one. Heptagon. Oh, all right, let me go back here. Search. Um, Let's type in modifiable, M-O-D-I-F-I-A-B-L-E, modifiable solid, and then enter. There should be a couple that show up here. Um, any one of these that has a blue background, here's the, here's the hexaheptagonal ones right there, I think. Whoops. Yeah, this one, was a, this one was a pain to make, but here, uh, cross sections parallel to the y-axis are regular heptagons. One second. And... In essence, uh, custom solid. All right, thirty more seconds. I promise. I know it's same type for questions here. All right, let's just do uh, let's just do the rhombus one. All right, I like to I like to ask kids questions about atypical solids. Like right here, for example. You know what? It's cool to see in three D, but I think augmented reality under puts it in a whole different perspective, in my opinion. But right over here, we could change, We have an upper and lower function. I just got to find the slider here. Uh, and all of these resources are in those two volumes that I sent you. Uh, in that first link here. Here it is. If I take the filling and reduce it, right? You see how I can clearly see the cross sections here. The cross section is a rhombus with a 60 degree angle. Hold it to the floor. Let's put it in AR. Let's bring this guy right up here. Now... We can actually watch what happens here. We can we can change that. We could change the angle of that rhombus. That's how I made it. But see, move me. You could see you could actually see cross sections literally being formed here. And so now, when kids actually say, you know, I, it also it helps us visualize what the whole concept of a cross section actually is. Ready? To, there's a lot of ready to use resources that are built right in there. You can go inside. You can do whatever. But this this is what I'm envisioning in the future to having kids mostly modeling and creating their own art. And it's just, it's a, to me, it's such a beautiful uh, winning combination. It's an amazing app that Team GeoGebra has built, and uh, I love it. And, you know, I'd love to see more of it in the math uh, classroom. And when I do go back to the classroom full-time, I know I will. Uh, my kids will be playing with this from, like, day one. So, yeah, thank you. Any questions? Well, I could see them all from Robert's computer. He has it angled the, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's in terms of that. In terms of that perspective, I know I focus mostly on pedagogy in the classroom, but I'm thinking, let's suppose you have a piece of furniture that has a broken leg, like that end table that was your great great grandmother's thing that's been passed down through the generations, right? And all of a sudden it breaks. 
but now you have, you, you see like, it looks like, you see like, boy, maybe one of those legs looks like an ellipsoid, right? With, uh, you know, you could find your A, your B, your C, right? And then now, build it in GeoGebra, have a 3D printer there, and you could actually take the time to print it and actually put it right back on there. I've, I've heard of this being done already. It's, it's pretty amazing that you can build 3D replicas mathematically and then send it to a 3D printer and you have, uh, you have a piece that could actually fit right, uh, right there. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I meant, I meant for education. That oh, have your, <laughs> then have your, have the, have the technology, have the woodshop teacher be doing exactly that in, at the school. <laughs> No, um, I think, yeah, uh, honestly, in education and 3D printing, we could literally be building replicas of, of classrooms altogether. I mean, I know Steve Phelps uh, has had his students. I'm a huge fan of Steve and his work. Uh, in the, in, he's, his work is respected by many in the international GeoGebra community. But he has actually had his geometry students building, like, you know, models of their houses. You know, using, like, you know, you know basic structures like rectangular prisms, but he would have his kids using 3D coordinates and point plotting and everything, you know, um, it's pretty cool. So um, having kids actually build, like for example, maybe here, this bay window that's in my office right here, this window, you know, I'm thinking of a trapezoidal prism. We could put it out and then we could put like some rectangles here. We could actually scale it down, make it to scale and let's actually build a replica of the office or let's build a, you know, there's no reason why kids today cannot do something like that. 3D printing and augmented reality go, um, go hand in hand. It's, 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 it's a beautiful combination. So. Thank you. Yes, I have a question for you. Yes. Uh, okay, I wanted to know if the, if the GeoGebra application could be reflected in real time. So not building, uh, building it on the application interface and then mapping it to a real object, but could it be that the real object, for example, two cones, Mm -hmm. And then it could be reflected in real time? It, you can already do that, actually. Um, like, I, I, can, I can actually transform in augmented reality. Like, remember when I had the Toblerone, I moved the A slider, it got bigger and smaller? Uh, I can do that in augmented reality. I just didn't show it there. But okay. what I cannot do yet, but I believe I've talked with Mathieu, and I believe this is coming. Uh, it, it's just a matter of when, not if. But what I would love to see happen is that, like, when I want to move a point on a sphere, say, Right now, I have to make three sliders in order to do that. You know what I mean? The horizontal, vertical, and the up. You get what I'm saying? But um, in, if I use the point on object tool, drop it on the sphere, I can move it in the, in the 3D view anywhere I want, right? But in augmented reality, it's, it, you can't touch it right now because it's still like new. But in the, in the months to come or years to come, I know it's coming. I just don't know when. But I've been told that the, the goal is to simply be able to modify in augmented reality in real time. So it's a vision that can happen with the basic GeoGebra tools. You could change you could change the surface while you're in AR and it'll change automatically. But moving points on objects is a more advanced thing that takes hours more of coding that I believe they're working on. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> That's not my screen. I'm not sure who that is, but all right. Got to charge that battery. It's at eight percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Tim, it's always very nice to to have you here, and I have a enormous Toblerone from the airport for you waiting. When when you are coming in July. Thank you. And I, I still have this game right here, too, that you gave me at, from MoMath in New York City. Uh, my wife and I have played around with it. It's really fun. Lodge of Faces? So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Uh, and thank you. Just, if I may, Jules, one, 
one more thing. If you like what you see, uh, I, I'm on social media a lot. I usually do one tweet or one Facebook post a day, sometimes more, but the last page of that tiny URL link that I gave you, the very the third page has all the social media links, YouTube, whatever. Um, every video I make, I put on YouTube just to store it there, but uh, feel free to like, subscribe, whatever, you know, uh, for ideas uh, for teaching and learning. So, but thank you. Yep. Like, you know, two and a half thousand people, so you can follow uh, Finn. So Finn is posting there all the time. And then we are doing this kind of online presentations everywhere. I think next time, uh, last time it was, we had in New York and Thailand. Next time we will do in China or some other places. So if you are interested in working with Finn, he is uh, very open and, and doing all of the things. So We'd love to hear your ideas. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you, uh, and B, thank you for scheduling it so I didn't have to get up at 3 in the morning. I really appreciate that. So, <laughs> all right. Six hours behind you, but yeah. Okay. Thank you.